Hello, my name is Monica Riccioli, and I am a member of the Oracle Web Logic product management team. Today, I want to talk about the JTA new features and optimizations in 12.3. I will cover two new features. One is the no XA transaction T log write, and the second one is a core feature actually, but that benefits the transaction subsystem in Web Logic Server called Cluster Transaction Affinity. How does the no XA transaction T log write work? A user would configure a determiner resource. This determiner resource would be the most reliable one. They would want to configure the least amount of determiners as to not affect performance. Determiners can be both JDBC data sources or WLSJMS resources. The determiner is the one that decides the outcome of pending transactions at recovery time. It must be an XA resource because we rely on the two-phase commit protocol. Determiner RMs will prepare and commit last in the global transaction. And if there is more than one, if the user has configured more than one determiner, both determiners or more than one determiner is enlisted in the global transaction, the first one to enlist will be nominated as the determiner. How does a two-phase commit traditionally work? When the transaction reaches a two-phase commit, it will call prepare, possibly in parallel, to all resources that are participating in the transaction. It will return the outcome of the prepare. The transaction record will be written to the T-log, and then the transaction manager will issue the commit to all RMs, possibly in parallel. After the outcome, then the transaction manager will remove the transaction record from the T-log. How does recovery work for a traditional two-phase commit? Processing. The transaction manager first will read the resource and server checkpoints, as well as all the transaction checkpoints that have been written to T-log. It will call XA Recover in parallel, and the resources will return a list of transactions that are pending. The transaction manager will compare the global transaction ID obtained for those transactions that were written to the T-log against the global transaction ID of transactions returned uh, from the resources when XA Recover was called. If these match, then the recovery outcome is a commit. If they don't match, then the outcome is a rollback. Finally, then the commit and the rollback are called on the resources in parallel, and once the outcome of that commit or rollback call is received, the transaction manager will remove the transaction checkpoint from the T-log. How does it work with a determiner? In 12.13, we still write a resource server checkpoint to the resource manager. This checkpoint is written very rarely. It is just written the first time the resource is used, and it's only purged if the resource is no longer used in a global transaction, in any global transaction, or if there has been an error in the resource, there is no connection to the resource any longer. So after that, uh, prepare will be called on all RMs that are not determiners. This, these calls can be in parallel. Once the vote is received, then the determiner resource is prepared last. Commit is called on all resources that are not determiners. Once the outcome of that commit call is received, then commit is called on the determiner last. Recovery with determiner resources. The first thing that happens is once the WebLogic server has come up, recovery starts, the transaction manager will read from the T-log resource and server checkpoints. This tells it what resources it needs to call XA Recover on. It will call XA Recover on any resor determiner, resource that is a determiner, and then it will call XA Recover on resources that are not determiners. The return from an XA Recover call is a list of pending transactions on that resource manager. At this point, the transaction manager will look into the transaction ID of each pending transaction. In the branch qualifier of the transaction, there is a bit that indicates what resource is the determiner for that particular transaction. At that point, it will make a comparison if the transaction is pending on the determiner resource as well as in all resources. That means that prepare has succeeded in every single resource and the transaction will be recovered with a commit. If the transaction is pending on some of the resources and it's not pending on the determiner, then the recovery will be a rollback 
The logic behind it is that if the transaction is not pending on the determiner resource, that means that prepare has not been called on that resource yet. Remember that the determiner will be the last one to be prepared in the global transaction. The recovery outcome of that transaction will be a rollback. Commit a rollback is called on all resources that are not determiners and it's called on the determiner last. The transaction manager did not have to either read any transactions from the transaction log, nor did they have to clean them once those transactions were complete. That's what gives this feature is optimization. What are the benefits of these features? There is up to a three times performance throughput improvement. There is a prepare and commit ordering, which is used for a race condition that we know times can occur between JMS and JDBC resources when they commit. There is an IO latency removed by not having to write to the T log and a resource or batch blocking removed when the T log is a JDBC T log. Of course, the memory consumption is reduced and capacity requirements are reduced because there is no writing to the T log for transaction checkpoint records. And also the T-log replication is made much easier. Limitations. The resource and server checkpoint records are still written. We cannot have a JTS resource or an LLR resource participating in a global transaction with a determiner because JTS and LLR do not support the two-phase protocol. Transactions where determiner RM is read-only have to be logged to the T-log, and that is because if only read-only operations are made on the determiner resource, then the transaction would not become pending, and we cannot rely on the determiner resource for the outcome of the recovery. Transactions that span multiple WebLogic servers will be logged to the transaction log. Transaction and JMS service migration are not supported. Server migration is. Dynamic clusters are not supported with this feature. How is it configured? Uh, you would go and click on your clusters, choose your cluster name, JPA tab, and then finally you would enter the determiner name in the determiner box. The way that the determiner name is configured would be in the case of a JDBC resource, it would be the data source name underscore domain name. In the case of JMS, it would be WL store underscore domain name underscore store name. And then in the case of the file mm -hmm. store, the WL store, XA domain, WLS, and then the, the server name. Uh, how do you know that this feature is working? You would use the regular JTA flags, JTA XA, JTA to PC, and JTA recovery. But when you look into your server log, you would find an entry, a JTA XA entry, log entry, that is looks like this. Server transaction input is log right necessary false as the determiner is set. So you know that this particular transaction was not written to the T log because the determiner was used to determine the recovery outcome. Cluster transaction affinity is WLS core feature introduced in 12.13, which the optimization benefits are received by the transaction subsystem. I will run through an example to illustrate how it works. The transaction is begin by the application and it reads the message from JMS. And then the application on server one, cluster one, makes a call to an application on cluster two, server two, making the transaction propagated mm -hmm. into cluster two. That application makes an insert into a database. It returns control to the application on server one. So the transaction is propagated back to cluster one. Instead of landing in any other server where the resources and the applications are available, it will land back in the original server where the transaction was started, which is a coordinator in this case. The optimization comes because instead of making another server in cluster one a subcoordinator, now the transaction spans less servers. We save the RMI to phase commit calls to other servers that are subcoordinators and are participating in the global transaction. How do you configure it? Clusters, you choose your cluster, you uh, choose a general tab, and then you just have to enable transaction affinity. Or you could use a command line, uh, weblogic cluster transaction affinity enabled equal to true. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.